the origin of water on Earth, or the reason that there is clearly more liquid water on Earth than on the other rocky planets of the Solar System, is not completely understood. There exist numerous more or less mutually compatible hypotheses as to how water may have accumulated on Earth's surface over the past 4.5 billion years in sufficient quantity to form oceans. Topic. Possible sources Topic. Internal sources Gradual dehydration melting leakage of water stored in hydrate minerals of Earth's rocks could have formed a portion of its water. Water may also have come from volcanism, water vapor in the atmosphere that originated in volcanic eruptions may have condensed to form rain, slowly filling Earth's oceanic basins. Topic. Extraplanetary sources Comets, trans-Neptunian objects, or water-rich meteoroids protoplanets from the outer reaches of the asteroid belt colliding with Earth may have brought water to the world's oceans. Asteroids may have been primarily responsible based on several studies, including measurements of the ratio of the hydrogen isotopes deuterium and proteum, since similar percentage impurities as in carbon-rich chondrites were found in oceanic water, whereas previous measurement of the isotopes concentrations in comets and trans-Neptunian objects correspond only slightly to water on Earth. This evidence is supported by two 4.5 billion year old meteorites found on Earth that contained liquid water alongside a wide diversity of deuterium poor organic compounds. Large enough planetesimals were heated by the decay of aluminium 26. This could cause water to rise to the surface. Recent studies suggest that water with similar deuterium to hydrogen ratio was already available at the time of Earth's formation, as evidenced in ancient Eucrite meteorites originating from the asteroid Vesta. That Earth's water originated only from comets is implausible, since a result of measurements of the isotope ratios of deuterium to protium (dH ratio) in the four comets Halley, Hyakutake, Hale Bopp, and 67 p. Churyumov Gerasimenko, is approximately double that of oceanic water. What is unclear is whether these comets are representative of those from the Kuiper Belt. According to Alessandro Morbidelli, the largest part of today's water comes from protoplanets formed in the outer asteroid belt that plunged towards Earth, as indicated by the d-h proportions in carbonaceous chondrite meteorites. The water in carbon-rich chondrites point to a similar d-h ratio as oceanic water. Nevertheless, mechanisms have been proposed to suggest that the d-h ratio of oceanic water may have increased significantly throughout Earth's history. Such a proposal is consistent with the possibility that a significant amount of the water on Earth was already present during the planet's early evolution. Measurements of the chemical composition of moon rocks suggest that Earth was formed with its water already present. Investigating lunar samples carried to Earth by the Apollo 15 and 17 missions found a deuterium to hydrogen ratio that matched the isotopic ratio in carbonaceous chondrites. The ratio is also similar to that found in water on Earth. The findings suggest a common source of water for both objects. This supports a hypothesis that Jupiter temporarily migrated into the inner solar system, destabilizing the orbits of water-rich carbonaceous chondrites. As a result, some of the bodies could have migrated inwards and become part of the raw material for making Earth and its neighbors. In 2019, researchers found evidence from molybdenum isotope ratios that the Earth gained most of its water from the same interplanetary collision that caused the formation of the Moon. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Water in the development of Earth. A sizable quantity of water would have been in the material that formed Earth. Water molecules would have escaped Earth's gravity more easily when it was less massive during its formation. Hydrogen and helium are expected to leak from the atmosphere continually, but the lack of denser noble gases in the modern atmosphere suggests that something disastrous happened to the early atmosphere. Part of the young planet is hypothesized to have been disrupted by the impact which created the moon, which should have caused melting of one or two large areas. Present composition does not match complete melting and it is hard to melt and mix huge rock masses completely. However, a fair fraction of material should have been vaporized by this impact, creating a rock vapor atmosphere around the young planet. The rock vapor would have condensed within 2,000 years, leaving behind hot volatiles which probably resulted in a heavy carbon dioxide atmosphere with hydrogen and water vapor. Liquid water oceans existed despite the surface temperature of 230 degrees Celsius 446 degrees Fahrenheit because of the atmospheric pressure of the heavy CO2 atmosphere. As cooling continued, subduction and dissolving in ocean water removed most CO2 from the atmosphere but levels oscillated wildly as new surface and mantle cycles appeared. Study of zircons has found that liquid water must have existed as long ago as 4.404 plus or minus 0.008 billion years ago, very soon after the formation of Earth. This requires the presence of an atmosphere. The cool early Earth hypothesis covers a range from about 4.4 billion to 4.0 billion years ago. In fact, recent studies of zircons in the fall of 2008 found in Australian Hadean rock hold minerals that point to the existence of plate tectonics as early as 4 billion years ago. If this holds true, the previous beliefs about the Hadean period are far from correct. That is, rather than a hot, molten surface and atmosphere full of carbon dioxide, Earth's surface would be very much like it is today. The action of plate tectonics traps vast amounts of carbon dioxide, thereby reducing greenhouse effects, and leading to a much cooler surface temperature, and the formation of solid rock, and possibly even life. In October 2014, Adam Serafian of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution released a study suggesting that water was on Earth as the planet was forming. This conclusion was drawn after establishing a link between the oldest known carbonaceous chondrite meteorites and meteorites believed to be from Vesta, which formed in the same region as Earth during the birth of the solar system, and noticing how their composition are similar, and both contained a lot of water. Topic. See also. Water on terrestrial planets of the solar system equals equals notes.